I'm Jono Buchanan, and in this video, we're going to explore Logic's distortion options, of which there are several. What we're going to do, first of all, is to listen to the track that we're going to be working on. And we're going to be focusing on these two tracks down here at the bottom, this kind of stab sound that's uh, sort of uh, kicking off each two bar phrase within this piece. Let's have a listen. Okay, so we've got this sort of big, powerful sound, but it's not actually as powerful as it might be. It might be interesting to add some distortion to it um, to make it happen. Now, here I am talking about it as one thing, but actually this part is made up of two separate bits. And what I'd really like to do is to apply a distortion to both of them, treating them as one sound, gluing them together in the mix a little bit. So firstly, what I want to do is to find a way where I can see them as kind of one thing rather than as two. And the easiest and fastest and best way to do that in Logic is to put them together in a track stack. That allows me to take both of these sounds, assign them to an auxiliary where any effects that I add to that auxiliary will affect both sounds within the stack. So I've selected them both here. What I'm then going to do is to press Control, click on either of them and select Create Track Stack. What Logic will do is automatically set up a new auxiliary for me. And of the two options that are available to me here, I want to select the Summing Stack option, which allows me to add effects, auxiliaries, uh, I send the sound onto other auxiliaries and have a volume fader and a pan dial and a full set of controls for this stack that's going to be created. So when I press the Create button, automatically Logic will create this new auxiliary bus for me, and these two sounds are now being rooted into it. So let's call this Stab. I'm going to just solo it so we're going to hear the sound by itself. So both of these sounds are now being rooted in. And as you can hear, they've got some reverb and some delay, but it would be quite nice to just have some extra power in the sound as well. Now here, what I'm going to do is to come to the first insert slot for this bus. Remember, any effects I set up will now affect both of these sounds because they're both appearing within this stack. And Logic's got a dedicated distortion folder here, which contains a few options. The first one of these is the Bit Crusher. Now this is effectively a sort of early digital distortion, like the SID chip. So what we've got here is an opportunity to change resolution down to 8-bit, which is in fact the sort of default resolution within here, which is just going to change the kind of clarity of the audio picture here. It's going to rough it up a bit and make it sound a bit aliasy and uh, kind of interesting. And the downsampling control is also really important here. You'll see as I move that, that the picture, the sort of audio resolution is graining up a little bit further. So let's just explore these two options, resolution and downsampling, to hear how they work. So you can hear, particularly in the release phase there, that, that we get this really nice crunchy um, sort of extra character. And that's coming from the downsampling as the sound tails away and we require sort of audio resolution to massage and manage that fade out. Because we're applying this uh, bit crushing process, that can't really happen, which means that the sound really crunches up. It's particularly nice as the sound fades off. So that's uh, the first of our individual distortion units. So let's swap out the bit crusher and instead let's come back to the distortion folder and we'll select the first of Logic's main distortion uh, plugins instead. Now what distortion actually is, is effectively a way of increasing the harmonic footprint of a sound. When we distort a sound, we're adding harmonics and different distortion units do that in different ways. And actually traditionally in hardware, there are lots of ways of adding um, saturation or distortion or increased harmonic content to sounds in lots of different ways. So you'll find that vintage compressors do that in some ways um, and distortion units do the same thing. Each distortion plugin that you come across will add harmonics, therefore sort of changing the tonal footprint of a sound. And of course, if we turn up harmonics a lot, we get a sound which is kind of closer to white noise, which is why sounds sound thrashy and a bit harsh. And that's where that comes from, from the increased sort of timbral footprint of a sound as we work through different distortion units. So within Logic's main distortion plugin, we've actually got only a limited 
limited range of things that we can do, and yet quite an interesting range of sounds can be achieved from it. So firstly, we can choose the tonal center, the point above which we're going to start adding that harmonic content that uh, we talked about a moment ago. So this is a sort of tone control for the distortion that we're adding. And then we can decide how much level of that we want to add. So that's across the tone and the drive settings. Let's just hear how that sounds as this part plays back. So you can hear that we get a real range of flavors there depending on where we set tone, whether we want sort of bright distortion and how hard we push that with the drive control. So that's the main distortion plugin within Logic. Let's swap that out for Distortion 2, which is the next uh, plugin here that we're going to have a look at. Now what this one does is to allow us to change the sort of character of the type of distortion that we're adding. We've got uh, a few options here. We've got Nasty, which is the default one. We've got Bitty, which is a bit more like a bit crusher. It just makes things a bit rougher in a slightly more digital way. And then we've got Growly Distortion too, hence the different names that are available to us. Here we've got a chance to select the input gain of the sound as it comes in. So this is effectively a volume control for the sound before it picks up its distortion. We've then got the drive control we saw a moment ago, how hard we want to push drive and and again, we've got a tone controller over here as well. Let's just again hear what can be done with the different settings within Distortion 2. So this is a slightly subtler effect, but what we're getting is something which is closer to sort of tape saturation rather than a really strong sort of more almost guitar associated distortion that we're sort of used to with electric guitars. Here we're getting something which is a sort of more coloring sort of tool. It's a sort of subtler way to go, but we're still getting all the sort of extra fizz that we wouldn't necessarily get with a smaller harmonic footprint that's just coming from the two sounds that we're routing through to this group. Now there are other distortion units available within Logic as well, but this little overview of the Bit Crusher and the two uh, main distortion uh, plugins, I think is a really nice way to start. And depending on whether or not you're looking to add a sort of really overdriven, uh, really tubey sort of sound or something that's a little bit more contained, you can really rough sounds up quite nicely. Now in the context of this piece, what I want to do is to go back to the Bit Crusher. I'm going to come back into here and choose something which just feels like it's got a slightly rough edged approach. I'm going to select 10 bit resolution and I'm going to uh, put the downsampling up a little bit so we get this kind of rough edge. Let's go back to how that sounds for a second. I particularly like this sort of decay phase where we get this kind of rough aliasy sound. Now if you don't want to completely replace the sound, the original signal within your mix, and what you want to do is to add a bit of this flavor without completely taking over the sound, the mix control is a really nice parameter to, ha to have a look at. This allows me to set a balance between the original sound, 0% mix, and the sort of wet only sound, which is the fully bit crushed sound. So what I'm going to do is to back the level down to something which is still using a generous amount of bit crushing, but which is retaining some of the original sound as well. And then I'm gonna push the drive a little bit harder just so we're getting some extra level here as well. Let's put the rest of the track back in just so we can hear how this works and then we can finesse the controls on it a little bit as we're listening back.
Okay, I like that. That's roughing up the sound a whole lot more than we had before. We've kind of lost the squeaky clean nature of those synths. And we've got something which is just a little bit dirtier now. Now again, of course, we've got volume control. We can bed that in or turn it up and make that sound be as expressive as we need it to be within the mix. But here we've looked at three separate distortion units within Logic. We've used the Bit Crusher and then Distortion and Distortion 2 to find out a little bit more about the flavors that they can add. And remember, when you're working with distortion, you're increasing the harmonic footprint of a sound, which is why, generally, distortion make things sound a little bit louder.